Since the coup that overthrew interim president Paul Henry Sandogo Damien on September 30, 2022, Burkina Faso has been led by military commander Ibrahim Traore, a native of Burkina Faso. Traore, at 34, is currently the youngest president in Africa. Traore's rise to power marked a waterish moment in Burkina Faso's history, as the country navigated the complexities of military war or calling for stability and democratic governance. Throughout his tenure he has maintained a formal and enigmatic demeanor as president, which he was previously known for. In an attempt to counter the unfavorable public opinion that followed his predecessors, Traore has made a deliberate effort to present himself as a dignified world leader, tightly controlling his communication to avoid the negative perceptions that plagued his predecessors. Traore's emphasis on projecting the image of a composed and decisive wartime leader, reflects his determination to guide Burkina Faso through difficult times, while maintaining a delicate balance between public opinion and military authority. As Africa's youngest Senate president, Traore's leadership style and decisions have far-reaching implications for Burkina Faso's projector trajectory and people's aspirations. During his tenure, pro-government propaganda has increased in Burkina Faso's traditional and social media outlets. It is appropriate to describe him as a revolutionary, similar to Thomas Sankara. In the most recent development, Traore has suspended the issuance of permits for the export of artisanal and semi-mechanized gold and other precious commodities effective immediately. Artisanal miners are individuals or small groups who use traditional tools and methods, often with limited technology and mechanization, to extract gold. They usually sell their gold directly to local traders or middlemen. Semi-mechanized miners use some level of mechanization in the extraction and processing, often utilizing small machinery and equipment. They may operate under more formal structures and sell their gold to larger traders or export companies. According to a statement released by the military leaders on February 20 the suspension was necessary to clean up the sector and reflects the government's desire to better organize the marketing of gold and other precious substances. It further mentioned that mining groups with materials to export are encouraged to contact the National Society for Precious Commodities for payment. As of 2020, gold accounted for 37% of Burkina Faso's total exports, and mining served as a significant source of employment. However, in recent years, political instability and a widespread Islamist insurgency have hindered exploration and reduced gold extraction leading to the closure of some mines and a decline in production and others. Two military coups were also launched in 2022 as a result of frustrations with the growing insecurity. It is unclear what effect the new export ban will have. Artisanal exports accounts for nearly half of the industrially produced gold in the Sahel region of West Africa, which includes Burkina Faso. Approximately 10 to 30 tons of gold are mined in Burkina Faso annually, employing an estimated 1 million people in the sector. It's worth noting that in December, Captain Ibrahim Traore revoked the mining licenses of all foreign businesses in Burkina Faso, including those from Russia. He appears to have become aware of the covert activities conducted by multinational corporations in Burkina Faso. How did he cancel the licenses and what is his plan for the thousands of tons of gold that will still be in Burkina Faso? This is unclear. Directly affected prominent industries included B2 Gold, Nordgold, Endeavor Mining, Samafo, Fortuna Silva Mines, and Hummingbird Resources all of which were Western businesses that plunder the country's riches, Captain Ibrahim could not understand why Burkina Faso, despite having significant gold reserves, remained one of the world's poorest countries. He was aware that Burkina Faso's former colonial power, France, had imposed unfair trade agreements on the country both before and after its independence, ensuring that France benefited disproportionately from Burkina Faso's gold resources. This has prevented Burkina Faso from establishing its own independent gold industry. During his military service, Captain Ibrahim Traore observed that Burkina Faso's gold exports were subject to unfair pricing arrangements, and that French companies were given first priority for licenses. France failed to provide adequate support to Burkina Faso's domestic gold mining industry, preferring foreign technology and expertise, thereby preventing the transfer of knowledge and skills to citizens in Burkina Faso. 
Due to increased reliance on foreign players, the country faced challenges in establishing itself as a leader in the gold mining industry. Captain Ibrahim Traore made it his mission to rectify this situation and free Burkina Faso from this trap after witnessing the evil nature of France's Sahelian policies. However, he acknowledged that Burkina Faso's government had previously been unduly influenced by France to ensure that policies favored French mining businesses, thereby requiring a change. This included opposing laws, supporting regional authority over gold reserves, and putting pressure on the government to offer favorable conditions to French businesses. Ibrahim Traoré decided to compete for the gold. First he must consolidate all of his powers to escape the systemic trap in Burkina Faso, where the CFA franc, a shared currency used by several West African countries, negatively impacted the nation's gold sector. Because of the CFA franc's fixed exchange rate with the euro, Burkina Faso's exports were perceived as artificially overpriced, reducing its international competitiveness. This is one of the primary reasons why Ibrahim Traoré recently announced that his country might soon abandon the CFA franc as part of a larger effort to break free from all the ties that kept them enslaved. Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger have consistently demonstrated that they prioritized autonomy over convenience, as demonstrated by their expulsion of French soldiers and withdrawal from a UN mission in Mali. Their stance on the euro-pegged CFA franc appears to remain unchanged despite the fact that analysts and experts believe that abandoning the CFA franc would be riskier and more challenging than leaving the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS, a decision that would be viewed as a daring, impossibly foolish act of defiance. However, France was able to artificially strengthen the CFA franc before devaluing it after purchasing a significant amount of gold from Burkina Faso, resulting in France paying less in CFA franc for the gold than the original amount. This made it clear that France's involvement in Burkina Faso's gold mining industry was primarily motivated by its desire to exploit the country's resources for its own benefit, with little regard for Burkina Faso's development. Traoré's decision to immediately suspend export permits for artisanal and semi-mechanized gold and other precious commodities has sparked a good number of discussions and raised concerns about potential impacts. The decision could have significant impact on the approximately 1 million people who are directly or indirectly involved in artisanal gold mining, which serves as a vital source of income for many in Burkina Faso. The suspension could lead to a decline in gold production and export, affecting the national economy and government revenue. Come to think of it, the ban may push some miners towards the black market, undermining the government's efforts for transparency and regulatory goals. The discontent among affected communities will almost suddenly result in social unrest and further instability, exacerbating the existing challenges in Burkina Faso. It is important to note that the government has not anno announced the duration of the suspension, which has created uncertainty for miners and businesses. However, Traoré certainly has a plan. It is possible that Western corporations have started using these small-scale gold traders to extract gold from Burkina Faso. Many African nations are trapped in cycles of dependency and poverty as a result of the substantial profits made by Western firms from Africa's resources. Traoré's initiatives are part of a growing trend among African leaders who demand a more equitable sharing of wealth that goes beyond immediate financial benefits, as well as challenging the notion that the continent is merely a source of cheap resources. By making this decision, Traoré challenges the Western narrative that views African nations as cheap resource suppliers, while also claiming his right to self-determination. Traoré is fighting for sovereignty. His bold action may inspire other African countries to adopt a similar attitude and take control of their destinies. Under the steadfast leadership of Captain Ibrahim Traoré, Burkina Faso is rewriting history by taking the challenge of regaining control over its vast gold reserves and challenging the historical dominance of foreign corporations. The establishment of a new gold refinery marks the beginning of an exciting new era in which the country aims to attract investors dedicated to sustainable and ethical development or realizing the full potential of its mineral wealth. Previously, Burkina Faso had to agree to allow export of unprocessed gold, as a result, Burkina Faso missed an opportunity to boost its revenue. With the establishment of its gold refinery, Burkina Faso's officials will be on-site to assess the appropriate amount of gold to be supplied. 
Previously, exporting raw gold meant accepting lower prices and excluding themselves from the refining process. Now is the time for change. It's worth noting that Traore has also fulfilling everything he promised in his speech at the Russian-Africa summit in St. Petersburg. He mentioned that Burkina Faso had been subjected to the most violent forms of imperialist neo-colonialism in recent years and slavery had continued to impose itself on them, but he did not want anyone to feel sorry for his country. This was because he had resolved to combat all of his country's crisis in order to relaunch its development. Here he is, consistently devising new strategies to improve the situation in his country. African countries must collaborate to achieve their development goals, including trade, security, and migration. To build trust and reduce disruption, it is critical to specify the objectives, timeline specifics of compensation for affected minors. Long-term solutions that go beyond simple regulation must address issues such as poverty, a lack of alternatives and poor governance. The situation in Burkina Faso is a sobering reminder of the complex issues surrounding small-scale gold mining in Africa. Although, there are no simple solutions, navigating this difficult train necessitates a new strategy that prioritizes transparency, sustainability and the well-being of impacted communities. The only way Burkina Faso and other African countries facing similar challenges can find a path to a more sustainable and more equitable gold industry is to carefully weigh the various perspectives and the implications. Do you believe Ibrahim Traore made the correct decision by suspending small-scale exports for gold production in Burkina Faso? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Please turn on the notification button so you will be notified whenever we upload videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.